is a resource for many on campus, but due to costs going up on everything, supplies of many items are lower than ever. We have more details at the top of the show. We certainly didn't run out of things to celebrate on Halloween as Monday was also President Joe Paul's birthday. We have a look at what he did to celebrate coming up in the show. USM football is like a butter because they are on a roll with a three game win streak. But will men's basketball see similar results after having one of its worst seasons on record? We'll certainly have to wait and see, Austin. New weather, sports, and more begins right now on SMTV. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Good evening, USM. I'm Huey Turledge. And I'm Amari Anderson. Thank you for tuning in to SMTV. Inflation and price gouging affect most goods. As a result, costs for almost everything are at record highs. SM2 reporter Garrett Grove joins us live in the newsroom to tell us how it affects USM's food pantry. That's right, Huey. Right now, the pantry is far from empty. However, it is hard to keep many items in stock. That, coupled with rising prices, makes running the Eagle's Nest Food Pantry harder than ever. Eagle's Nest Food Pantry is located under the hub at USM. It was established in 2016 by the Student Association of Social Work. It is for students, faculty, and staff at Southern Miss. We like to dedicate an hour before we open to focus on restocking with our volunteers. And we also like to dedicate an hour of cleaning and disinfecting when we close each day. Though the pantry offers more than food, many shelves remain unstocked at Eagle's Nest. This is due in large part to increased demand for assistance and fewer donations from the community a steady stream of canned and processed food still comes in. However, fresh food, frozen food, and even seasonings are rarely available. Because people aren't able to afford to give their you know, little extra money that they have for donations, so we are struggling with getting donations due to it. Volunteers for Eagle's Nest make the pantry more accessible to others. For those like freshman Hayden Dangerfield, Volunteering gives her a sense of purpose at USM. And I get to meet like a lot of different people that like aren't just in my major. I get to meet people in other types of majors and I think it's really fun to just like meet all types of new people. The Eagle's Nest Food Pantry is open on Wednesdays and Fridays. Be sure to go on USM's website to find more information on donations, volunteering, and hours of operation. Reporting live in the newsroom, Garrett Grove, SM2 News. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you, Garrett. This past Monday was a well-known holiday, Joe Paul's birthday. To celebrate, USM's 11th president passed out candy to trick-or-treaters at his house. In conjunction with Halloween, it was a two-fold affair for the community. It's my birthday, so that's one of my favorite things. Uh, but I just love the, uh, the joy it brings to people young and old dress up like something special and go house to house. When I was a kid, I thought all this was for my birthday. Everybody's dressing up. Everybody's giving me candy. It's a great time. We're, we're very happy to greet uh, folks from around town as presents on today. Paul also mentioned how ecstatic he is to be USM's president. On behalf of Southern Miss Student Media, we would like to wish President Joe Paul a happy belated birthday. For those still in a spooky spirit after Halloween, grab tickets for Southern Miss Theater's latest production, The Adams Family. The Adams Family opened on the October Adams 28th. The Adams Family opened on October 28th. The show is based on the play written by Marshall Brickman and Rice Elise. The plot sees an adult Wednesday Adams brings home her first love, Lucas. The culture clash between their two families forces them to reckon with pleasure, pain, and family ties. Dramaturge and sophomore theater major Sarah Guerdos talked about the story in more depth. I think the Adams family, from their classic cult, classic status with the original comics, the Adams all family. the Open. TV shows, the movies, it really proves this point of how wonderful oddness and eccentrics are. Tickets are still on sale for shows on November 3rd, 4th, and 6th. 
In more pressing news, here's what one local business owner is doing to help prevent fentanyl overdoses. Fentanyl has quickly become one of America's most popular and dangerous drugs. It is 50 to 100 times stronger than morphine. Dealers often mix it with other drugs, meaning that users often don't know what they are taking. This is what happened to Jeffrey Moore in 2015. He overdosed just eight days after leaving rehab. His father, James Moore, owner of Moore's Bicycle Shop, has since become an advocate for fentanyl awareness. He distributes Narcan and fentanyl testing strips at his shop for free, requiring only an instructional video. If you or someone you know is struggling with an addiction, please contact Lisa Wright at the Moffitt Health Center. Coming up next week, we'll take a look at what we have in our Flash News Briefing and Sports Recap. But before then, let's take a quick look at the weather. <laughs> For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Not again. Great. I'm going to be late. Call Lockout Locksmith. When every second counts, we are on the scene. You can count on us, your friendly neighborhood locksmith. We are available Monday through Saturday from 7 to 7. Call now. 601 854-6521 or visit us at lockoutlocksmith.service I just feel so good will take its public relations master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. A couple of things outside of Hattiesburg that you need to know about here in your SM here is your SMTV flash news briefing. The Hattiesburg Pocket Museum has revealed and opened its November exhibit to the public. It will be the largest I Spy exhibit yet and will be on display throughout November. The content of the exhibit is from the Office of Collecting and Design, which is a library and a museum of antique and forgotten objects located in Las Vegas. The Pocket Museum plans to bring more traveling exhibits to Hattiesburg in the upcoming year so they can see collections they may not have been able to experience otherwise. Today, the White House has announced the 13 and a half billion dollar initiative to help low income households pay for energy bills this winter. The program will also help families make cost effective home energy repairs. Energy costs are expected to be the highest they've ever been in more than a decade this winter. Homes heated with natural gas could see a 28% increase in power bills. One factor contributing to, the, to this is Russia's war in Ukraine, which has increased prices and low, lowered access to supplies. Another could be rebounding global energy consumption from the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has triggered long-lasting price spikes. This morning, North Korea fired at least 23 missiles, one landing just off the coast of South Korea. The missiles were shot across the sea and into South Korea's side of the inter-Korean maritime border. They landed less than 37 miles from land. This is dangerously close to the large coastal city of Sokchu. 
Aid raid sirens were also triggered on Yuling Island, which was in the direction of the missiles being shot. Residences were told to evacuate into underground shelters. This is the highest number of missiles North Korea has launched in a day. South Korea responded by firing three air-to-ground missiles back over the maritime border. Later, North Korea fired six more missiles and 100 artillery shells. North Korea says the launches are in response to the large-scale military exercises being held in South Korea and the United States. It warned that the two countries would pay the most horrible price in history if they did not stop. to the SMTV Sports Recap with Austin Lindsay. Southern Miss Athletics had quite the week this past weekend, not losing a single game, with Golden Eagles football highlighting a major victory in a Thursday primetime matchup. Also, hear more on how Golden Eagles volleyball continues to soar on a four-game win streak and find out which program took home the first Sun Belt Championship in the Sun Belt era. Last but not least, basketball season is here as the Golden Eagles are poised to start regular season play. But first, let's take it to the gridiron. On Thursday, Southern Miss had one of its most dominant victories of the season versus the reigning Sun Belt champs, Raging Cajuns of Louisiana, 39 to 24. Hear from SM2 sports reporter Nathan Lee on the Golden Eagles primetime victory. In a season that offense has been a struggle, the Golden Eagles had no problems in their Thursday night matchup against the Louisiana Lafayette for Asian Cajuns. The offense did not give the fans much to cheer about early on, as Zach Wilkie would throw a pick on the first pass of the game. However, he showed a high level of maturity, as he would put that air right behind him and lead the offense to multiple scoring drives. The first score of the game would come after a defensive interception for the Eagles, ending in a Janari Dean rushing touchdown. After that, Frank Gore Jr. would have a play that took the college football world by storm with a 53-yard bomb of a passing touchdown to tie Mims. The offense kept pouring it on as Zach Wilkie would find Jason Browning for a 76-yard passing touchdown. With a few more successful drives, the Golden Eagles gave themselves a whopping 29-11 lead going into half, their biggest FBS halftime lead of the season. Head coach Will Hall talks about his team's offensive performance on Thursday night. Yeah, so you know we wanted to we wanted to try to create some explosive plays offensively. That's something we've not been doing, and uh, we were able to do that. You know, we hit Ty on the big one, we hit Brownlee on the big one. We had a methodical drive that I think was about ten plays or so. Uh, we were good on third down. Zach made a big play on third down. We were seven of sixteen total, but a lot of those stops. We're late in the game. We were just running out the clock. The offense would stall out in the second half as they would only gain 55 total yards. But that is when the nasty bunch defense would show up. The defense would cause six turnovers in the second half, three being turnovers on downs. Still, the defense would come away with a fumble and two interceptions, with one being the game ceiling 53-yard pick six by Natron Brooks. Head coach Will Hall had some specific people to thank after the win. Well, the first person I want to talk about, I'd like to talk about Jeremy M McLean first because he's a special dude to me. And, uh, man, he's just a real guy. He never, he never reacts. He always processes and then makes decisions. There's a lot of leaders to nowadays, especially in administration, that will react. He never reacts. And then getting Dr. Paul, man, I've been a big Joe Paul fan before all this even happened. I live right across the street from his, uh, from his daughter. And... Uh, me and Joe are a lot alike in a lot of ways. This now pushes the Golden Eagles' regular season record to 5-3, and three, keeping their Sun Belt Championship hopes alive with only four games left in the season. Nathan Lee, 4th Street Sports. Southern Miss offense came alive behind its star players in wideout Jason Brownlee and Frank Gore Jr. 
Gore Jr. with total 87 yards on the ground and a beautiful 52-yard touchdown dime to Ty Mims in the first quarter. Jason Brownlee also got in on the scoring with a huge play of his own for a 76-yard reception, being out four UL defenders, giving Chase headed to the apartments in the end zone. Brownlee tacked on another TD to end the night with 103 yards receiving on three catches. Now, let's take a look at the Sunbelt West Division race. On a three-game win streak at 5-3, the Golden Eagles sit third for the West Division title, tied at 3-1 with South Alabama. South Al holds the tiebreaker with a better overall record currently, but a November 19th matchup will determine who has the upper hand. Troy sits atop the division as USM needs, needs a Trojan loss to have a shot at the number one spot after a 27-10 loss earlier in the season. Southern Miss football will look to keep its win streak alive at the Rock on Saturday versus Georgia State at 2 p.m. Friday, Southern Miss Cross Country grasps its first ever conference title in program history and its first appearance in the Sun Belt with four runners placing in the top 15 of the race. Olivia Wozniak would lead the Golden Eagles with a time of 16 minutes and 42 seconds, finishing third in the meet and earning Freshman of the Year honors and first-team all-conference honors. Isabella Ross, fifth-place finish, earned first-team honors. Aaron Phelps, second-team honors. And Smilla Colby earned third-team honors. The team now preps for the NCAA Regional on November the 11th. Golden Eagles Volleyball is also on a roll with a four-game win streak rolling past the Panthers of Georgia State for its final home series of the season. In the first match, Southern Miss swept Georgia State convincingly, and on Saturday, the Panthers responded, winning the first set, but then, from then on, it was all Golden Eagles, rattling off three straight sets. Mia Wesley would lead the Golden Eagles with 29 kills for the weekend. Southern Miss now looks to keep the momentum going as they travel to Louisiana to take on the Raging Cajuns in Lafayette, Louisiana. Basketball season is here. The Golden Eagles began preseason play against Delta State Tuesday night. The Golden Eagles took down the Statesman 84-54 behind junior guard Mo Arnold, who led the team with 12 points on 5 of 7 shooting. But as the season begins Monday versus William Carey, the Golden Eagles are optimistic about this year's squad. Guard Mo Arnold and head coach Jay Ladner talk about what to expect this upcoming season. It felt great. You know, we've been working all offseason. Everybody working hard, like everybody. And it just feel like it's a whole different feel now. Like everybody care. It's just a brotherhood now. Yeah. And they can really pass the basketball. And and uh, we, we use the teaching term, we're an extra pass team. We're an extra pass. We're going to make that extra pass to get a better shot. And, uh, and I thought you saw, you saw some, I don't want to just say glimpses. There, it, it happened uh, often. Now, for the first time in 4th Street history, we have co 4th Street Players of the Week, first starting with the fan vote, which is none other than the defensive back Malik Shorts. Shorts combined for 11 total tackles with five solos. Shorts also snagged one interception and another INT on a two-point attempt, which did not count on the stat sheet, sadly, adding one pass breakup and one QB hurry also. And your other 4th Street Player of the Week goes to Ryan Dupey as he won the White Sands Bahamas Invitational Sunday in NASA, shooting 12 under par in the Invitational, leading the Golden Eagles to a third place finish. Last but not least, it's time for the Play of the Week. You've seen it early in the broadcast, but it goes to Frank Gore Jr. dropping back, faking the defense out when everyone thought it was a run from the super back. But he drops back and drops in a dime in the bread basket to speedster Ty Mims, setting the tone for the for the numerous humans for the numerous huge plays to come from the Golden Eagles on the night. Somebody get that man a contract. But that has been all for the SMTV Sports Recap. Back to you.
Thank you, Austin. Coming up, a group on campus gets up exceptionally early to practice out their beliefs. That story and the community calendar are up next. Don't go away. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. I just feel so good. as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its public relations master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Every Monday, members of Eagle Catholic meet at 5 a.m. to begin their day with a bit of exercise and prayer. Brooke Parker has the story on this student organization's unique tradition. Rosaries in hand and nothing but dim street lights as a guide, student members of St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church have been praying over neighborhoods for years. What is now a love tradition began with Pastor Mark Ropel, who walks the same path every day. It's something he's done his entire life and career as a priest. Uh, he goes to walking every 5 a.m., every morning, every day of the week, and so on Mondays he invites us out to join him on this rosary to start our week off with in prayer and community. For many college students, sleep is a coveted thing not worth giving up, but for members of Eagle Catholic, it's worth the early wake-up call. I just love the community and also I just love it that we're getting up this early and we're setting our intentions for people who are probably still asleep and they have no idea that we're praying for them. Um, but also I just love this community. Um, we pray the rosary, but we also afterwards just get to talk and um, it's just a great way to start the week. If you're not a morning person, Eagle Catholic and the St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church host various activities throughout the week as well. You know, we're here to serve the students we have. So like the difference between Sunday dinners after the 6 p.m. mass and around 7 p.m. we have student dinners. Every other Tuesday we have encounter, which is we bring in speakers from around the coast to talk about, like, teach the students on their Catholic faith. Student Mass is held every Wednesday and Sunday at 6 p.m. Brooke Parker, SM2 News. If students have any interest in checking out Eagle Catholic, they can visit at Eagle Catholic on Instagram to see upcoming events. I am Maya Evans. Welcome to the Community Calendar. SMAC is partnering with the Center for Pathway Experience to present The Pursuit of Happiness. The movie shown will be held in the Joe Paul Theater on November 3rd at 6 p.m. The NPAC presents Let's Talk About Sex. You will learn and discuss safe sex and healthy habits and practices. It will be held in Union Room B on November 3rd at 6 p.m. Pierre Pettis is returning live at the Backdoor Coffee House on November 4th, Friday at 7.30 p.m. The RHA presents the Neon Dodgeball Tournament on November night at the Payne Center in Gym 3 and Gym 4 from 6 to 8 p.m. 
USU LSI presents yoga on Thursday from 6.30 through 7.20 a.m. 9 to 9.50 a.m. Friday from 12.10 to 12.50 p.m. and Sunday from 2 to 2.50 p.m. The Eagles Dining Committee is hosting karaoke on November night at the Southern Wing Company from 6.30 to 9 p.m. AASO presents Men's Toiletries Drive. All proceeds will go to the Billy Brumfield Shelter. The dates are from November 2nd to December 1st. The VSA is having a bowling night on November 8th at 7 p.m. To attend, you go to the link tree on their Instagram, which is a USM VSA. To fill out the form, this will take place at the Hub Bowling Lanes. The Zeta Phi Theta Sorority is hosting Let's Talk About Mental Health on November 7th from 6 p.m. to until. This event will take place in Union Room G. This, that's the community calendar for the week. I'm Maya Evans. Back to the studio. Okay, turns out we have been pronouncing Adele all wrong. I don't know if y'all seen that, but she's Adele. Adele? I like think a, that's how. Adele. Like Adele. Adele. Yeah, Adele. 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 I guess it's the Adele. British coming out? Adele. I think I'm going to yes. stick Adele. Yeah. I'm going to stick to Adele. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, thank you so much for watching SMTV. Be sure to subscribe to Southern Miss Student Media on YouTube and follow us on all our social medias. You will be sure to find a new episode of the show every Wednesday evening. But hey guys, it's awesome to be behind the news desk. But for those at home, be sure to tune in next week. I'm Amari Anderson. I'm Maya Evans. I'm Huey Turledge. And I'm Austin Lindsay. And as always, Southern Miss to, to the, the top. top. TV news episode? Find us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Southern Miss Student Media. Listen to Southern Miss today, Monday through Thursday on WUSM. Get all of your local, regional, and national news, weather, sports, and more on Southern Miss today. News you can use. If you would like to advertise with Southern Miss Student Media, give us a call today at 601-266-4258 or reach out to Justin Martin at wilbur.martin at usm.edu. Not again. Great. I'm going to be late. Call Lockout Locksmith. When every second counts, we are on the scene. You can count on us, your friendly neighborhood locksmith. We are available Monday through Saturday from 7 to 7. Call now. 601-854-6521. Or visit us at lockoutlocksmith.service.